Hi everyone, my name is Cy Venom and I'm a developer advocate with IBM. Today we're going to start with part two of the hybrid cloud architecture series, strategies to modernize legacy or monolithic applications. In part one of the series we talked about hybrid cloud connectivity and we used a similar sample application, StockTrader. This time around we're taking a step back in time to when StockTrader was still a monolithic application running on-prem on VMs. But the architecture is mostly the same. It's using an SOA, or service-oriented architecture. It's actually a precursor to microservices-based architectures. So very simply, within the monolith itself, you can imagine this is something like Java EE-based application. We've got the front end, uh, the UI application that works with the portfolio. So basically manages uh, your different portfolios and, and keeps track of the stock prices. Uh, so to get those stock prices, it actually hits another service which goes uh, to the Investors Exchange uh, public REST API endpoint. Um, all of that data and, and the portfolio information is stored in an on-prem database. Um, and then we've also got a couple of services here. So we've got the loyalty service, which keeps track of you know, loyalty with specific stocks that you might have in your portfolio. And then notifies users as well on that loyalty whenever it changes by taking advantage of a message queue service, which notifies the user through something like email. So that's a very simple overview of the architecture. And this is something that's worked quite well for, for uh, that fictional company, StockTrader. Uh, it's worked well for them, and they've seen growth and expanded. Um, and potentially, you know, maybe they've become an international company. So what they've noticed is certain users that are using this application are seeing increased latency. Um, so the architects on the StockTrader side decided, you know, it's time to get rid of the monolith. It's time to start deconstructing it and stake, taking advantage of the public cloud. So let's talk about how they can do that. The first step of the process to deconstructing is going to be to identify the piece that we want to break out of the monolith. So a couple ideas we can throw out here, for example, we don't want to move the portfolio service to the public cloud because you know it's tied so deeply to the other services. In fact, it's actually also talking to the loyalty service. So, you know, if we move that portion, there'd be a lot of unnecessary uh, network hops, probably making the issue even worse for our users. Probably the best portion to break out is going to be the UI or the front end. Uh, that allows us to put the front end in multiple geographic locations. Um, just, just a quick clarification: the UI is not only the front end component, but the back end for that front end which kind of makes calls to all of these other backend services to render data. So yeah, so I think UI is a great piece to start with. It's, it allows us to start small and sets us up uh, for better kind of deconstruction in the future. But OK, so the first thing we've done, we've identified the resource. The second thing we want to do is refactor. So we can't simply just move that portion out of the monolith into the cloud. And, and, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but the main one being that communication between these services doesn't do well on public internet. It's, it's software-based calls. Uh, it's based within the SOA architecture within the Java platform. We need to take advantage of something like REST, something that performs well over the public internet. So first thing we need to do is create glue code. Essentially, we need to... Um, create endpoints that the UI can access that portfolio. And in addition, we have to expose REST API endpoints on the portfolio on the loyalty side so the UI can access it itself. This is essentially what we call glue code because it allows us to kind of keep that same pathway of communication between services, but we enable it to work over the public internet. So that's that second step. We refactor it. And that once we've done that, we can actually go ahead and uh, deploy that into the public cloud. So third step is going to be deploy. So we take that UI and we put it in the public cloud. And basically what we need to do is expose a point for access of it. Um, and you know, we've got the same thing over here where the UI is exposed from the monolith. Um, the legacy API flow, you know, when a user traditionally hits this application, comes from their browsers, hits that monolith application, this continues to work great. You know, we've, we've verified it, that the glue code that we put in place isn't breaking anything. And then here's the, uh, here's the important step. We want to make sure that uh, that new API flow, the one that's directly accessing the UI in the public cloud, continues to work. Now, a good strategy here is to initially maybe do 10% of your user traffic goes to the public cloud UI, 
whereas the remaining percent goes to the on-prem. Allows you to kind of make sure, catch issues in production, make sure a lot of your users aren't affected. Eventually, you catch all the errors, you make sure the public cloud is error-free. That's when you deprecate the older UI portion, you know, just get rid of the whole thing and take advantage of the UI on the public cloud side. So the last step is repeat. Once you have successfully broken out a part of the monolith and into the public cloud, we can start thinking about next things that we want to break out. So so far, we've, we've moved uh, the UI to the public cloud, and let's say that things are going great, you know? Uh, all the international users are getting better response times when they're accessing the applications. Things are going well, and, and we may not have a need to further uh, our deconstruction of the monolith. I think this is something very important to think about. Uh, doing this refactorization and, and, and converting services into microservices, it's an expensive approach, and until you feel the need to do so, it might make sense to keep your monolith as is. But regardless, let's say that this application is continuing to grow and we have a new bottleneck. And that's going to be the stock price. So with all of these portfolios and all of these different users using it, you know, we don't need to scale out these other portions as much, but maybe the stock price, you know, we're, we're hitting that so many times. We're using the investors exchange to get those stock prices and we want to scale that out. Unfortunately, with our monolithic architecture, if we want to scale stock price out, we have to scale everything out. And then on-prem, we don't have enough resources to do that. So our users are getting bad experiences again as, as our user base grows, and we want to move that stock price to take advantage of the public cloud scalability. But let's say that we don't have time, right? So users are already having a bad experience. We don't have time to refactor that stock price out and create a microservice. That's where we can take advantage of lift and shift. Essentially, take this entire monolith and move it over to the public cloud. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, let's take that entire monolith, the stock trader. But, you know, although we have the whole portion here, the piece that we really want to scale out is the stock price. Um, so although this is the entire monolith, uh, we want to only use the getting the stock price portion. So inside here, you know, we have a smaller portion to get stock prices. So now that we've effectively kind of lifted and shifted the entire monolith out to the public cloud, we can start taking advantage of scalability. We can maybe scale it out eight times as an example, taking advantage of public cloud resources. Now, I understand that this is not the best approach, but with the limitations, since we needed to go to market, by containerizing the monolith, and moving it to the public cloud, we can really start taking advantage of the resources there and then start thinking about the next step of our kind of modernization process. One thing I want to mention here, so my next uh, line here, innovate and improve, you always want to find ways to improve your application. What we've noticed here is that, you know, the UI is in the public cloud, but uh, kind of the communication channel for it, essentially the UI is always kind of going back to the monolith um, to take advantage of the portfolio, loyalty, uh, and whatever other services might be there, right? So um, the first thing that we notice is that the UI hits the portfolio, which then has to come back out here uh, to hit the, the monolith in the public cloud to get the stock prices. That in turn goes back to the portfolio and then back out to the UI. That's a lot of unnecessary network hops. We can always innovate and improve throughout this process of modernization why don't we get the stock prices directly in the UI and then offload all of the kind of database storage uh, kind of activities asynchronously? Well, that's one easy way to innovate and improve on our existing architecture. Let's refactor these applications so the UI is talking directly to the monolith in the public cloud to get those stock prices. So that's one example of kind of always innovating and always improving when doing this kind of migration. Another thing, so we talked about how using the whole monolith in the public cloud, it's not the best approach, but allowed us speed with go-to-market. Let's take advantage of some new technology, Let's say serverless, for example. So we want to factor out this one portion right here and take advantage of serverless capabilities to get stock prices. Um, so by using the serverless platform on a cloud, um, 
we can then take functions as a service, which in turn goes and hits um, the investors exchange public APIs. So we'll take advantage of the IEX public APIs using serverless. And then what we want to do again, so same four step process, we've identified the piece, get, we've refactored it into a serverless action, we've deployed it into production, and then what we want to do is test it there, right? So legacy and uh, new API flows. So again, this is the uh, legacy flow, and then the new API flow is going to hit that serverless action directly. Once we have verified that this flow works well, we can entirely cut out that monolithic architecture that we pulled into the public cloud for simply just stock prices. So again, we've kind of talked about how we take advantage of um, these four-step process to break out individual portions out of a monolithic architecture and move it into a public cloud. These three things, deconstruction of monoliths, lifting and shifting, as well as always innovating and improving, are going to set you up for success when you're modernizing your monolithic applications. As always, we're checking for feedback, so drop a comment below. In the next part of the hybrid cloud architecture series, we'll be talking about security. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned. If you want more information about what we talked about today, check the related information for links below. Thank you.